to testing definitions, role of testing, key processes, test processes, embedded software, embedded system test methods, level of unit testing, integration testing, acceptance testing, and their definitions. And uh, uh, what are those? And regression testing. All this we had a, an introduction session. In the next session, it was about uh, test case design and procedures with example uh, uh, procedure or test case, how it is designed, uh, what is the template, uh, those things we studied. Also, we studied about uh, the testing standards, what should be used and how it should be used. Test philosophy, what is BNV, <coughs> debugging, test planning, example test plan. Uh, how the planning uh, should be done. The recap of the next session: example test specification, example test spec, test procedure example. So we studied about those. Also, we had uh, gone through a sample uh, SRS. I think I just uh, I shared a, a sample SRS of a uh, simple embedded unit instrument. Now maybe we can touch base with that again during our uh, exercise. That uh, SRS uh, software requirement specification talks about uh, different modes of operation that embedded unit does, and uh, an example scenario also we underwent during that session. Okay. Uh, in the next session, uh, we studied about uh, levels of testing, unit integration, and system depiction, and system depiction, test harness. Uh, about uh, test to set up how tests are uh, done and how they are set up and uh, we studied about uh, uh, the host and target based uh, debugging and testing from developer perspective as well as tester perspective in the initial stages of the software uh, life cycle and also we came across the simulator emulator target monitors so these are some of the testing uh, uh, setups, uh, how they are going to be used in different levels of testing, like it could be unit level or it could be integration level or uh, system level. And uh, we listed out a sample uh, test tools, what are those with an example. And uh, this will be the basis for our uh, next session. So, how we are going to uh, formulate all those tests uh, based on this platform. Okay, then in the next session we studied about uh, TM method, this is one of the structured uh, testing method, uh, this overview, uh, little principles uh, that are uh, life cycle techniques, infrastructure organization, how TM method is uh, defined. Then we have categorized the commercial tools and a snapshot example also. In the next session, we studied about the software life cycle, uh, entry and exit criteria of the different uh, uh, life cycle phases uh, with an example of a prototype life cycle, formal life cycle, we defined it and software testing life cycle also we studied. We took example of a V model life cycle, uh, typically embedded industry they follow V model life cycle and its process and elements. And also in the next session, the session I will tell about uh, what are the process elements and uh, we took an automotive process, automotive testing process and consumer electronics uh, life cycle example uh, we had a walkthrough. And different types of life cycle also, uh, basically it is an extension of uh, the V model life cycle, uh, then we did a multiple V model testing by developers. Testing by independent testing. In the last session, session 11, we studied about mass test planning. That means for a bigger or complex systems, how we are going to test, how we are going to plan the tests. That is nothing but master test planning. Ten principles of embedded software test based on the art of software testing also. We just gone through. Uh, those are all uh, going to be helpful in terms of understanding the next level of uh, how to do this test and what are the different types of tests. So these are about uh, recap of uh, different sessions that we had in the unit one. 
So unit one is all about uh, fundamentals, understanding, templates, standards, process, etc. Okay. All right. <coughs> okay. So in this session, we study about the testing method and its details. Okay. To start with, uh, let's study a little about IVND. It is an important term that is used in the industry. Uh, it is nothing but independent validation and verification. Uh, there is a dedicated team. They do this activity uh, in a typical embedded software development and testing. There is an IVND team. As I said in uh, my earlier uh, there is a plan. Execution strategy, execution team, who has to do what and all that. So all this comes under IV and V concept, IV and V terminology. So why it is called independent validation verification is there is a dedicated team. The testing has to be done with independence of the uh, some of the uh, embedded software uh, development or uh, the testing mechanisms are all uh, will be done in an independent manner, so that it is not biased. Okay, so what is verification? So the basic difference between verification and validation is are we building the product right? And the validation is are we building the right product? So two things are there. The product means the embedded software. Uh, first, as per the requirements. The product is in build. That's what is a verification. Validation is uh, the product once we develop, are we building it right? That means whether the product is acceptable from the customer perspective. So we are going to validate that. So these two are very important terms. The process of demonstrating the product build is right. So on the left hand side, you can see the verification concept. On the right hand side, you can see the validation concepts. And its differences you can compare it. Uh, verification it is a process that is used to evaluate whether or not a product service or system complies with regulations, specifications, or conditions imposed at the start of the development phase. That means basically, verification takes care of the development aspects also, like whether the Life cycle that is followed during development phase, whether it is complying to all the regulations, uh, whether the product or the process or the service that are used or the conditions imposed during the development phase are in line with what is expected. So all this will be evaluated under the verification uh, activities. Whereas in validation, the process of establishing evidence that uh, Provides a high degree of assurance that the product, service, or the system accomplishes its requirements. That means we validate once these things are in place, whether that is meeting the needed requirements is what we are going to validate under the validation activity. As I said, the process of demonstrating that this is the right product is what validation does. Okay. The next one is verification can be development, scale up, or production. Which is often and process based. So basically, the as per the process, the process could be anything that is going to be defined within the organization. How it is going to be developed and tested. So all these aspects will be verified under the verification plan. So this verification can also be part of development. Whereas this often involves acceptance of witness for purpose with end users and other products based. That means. From the acceptance perspective, the product is validated. Example of verification is the model testing, requirement based testing, integration testing. That means all the 
uh, primary inputs that are used are going to be applied for verification purpose whether the product that is built is correct is what is uh, getting done under the verification whereas in uh, validation example is that system testing carried out from the end user who is going to use the product that means uh, the product is built right that is the right product I mean what is needed for the end customer is getting done is going to be validated. So all these aspects verification and validation are done with independence because it should not be biased that is the purpose of IUND. Okay. Now there is a term called static testing and dynamic testing. What are those? So let us define about dynamic testing. So we will understand the what is it. Then we will, uh, in uh, contrast to that, how static testing static testing is done. So that we will know the differentiation and uh, how both are important. We will study about it. Okay. So what is dynamic testing definition? A process of evaluating a system or component based on its behavior during execution. That means testing done during its execution is called dynamic testing. It is as simple as that. We will put the unit under execution and put the unit under test while it is executing the program that is intended. That is a simpler definition. Another definition is testing by executing the program with real inputs. That means we do that testing. While the system is under execution or the system is running the intended program, that is the definition of dynamic testing. The other method in context is static testing, that is what I was telling. This testing is done without the need of execution. So, basically, we do the dynamic testing first, conclusion of all the real codes provided to the test, provided to the system, and we collect all the outputs and all that. Along with that, we it may not be sufficient to have a just dynamic testing alone. We need to have a static testing also. So that process doesn't require any. So this includes software inspection and some forms of analysis. So basically, analysis, inspection, reviews, and all are done under the static testing. Sometimes, in some scenarios or the test cases that we have defined, it may not be possible to. Test it when the program is running or executing. So we may have to do uh, some sort of a analysis of the uh, program that is running underneath the target, or we may have to inspect the code, or we may have to analyze some of the uh, results that we have captured. So with all that, uh, with the help of that, we will arrive at a conclusion that is all under the static testing. So that is the definition of static testing, dynamic testing. Static testing we do not need to execute, dynamic testing is done when the program is executed. Okay. Dynamic testing in continuation of the definition, uh, there are two types uh, we can categorize in dynamic testing. Explicit dynamic testing and implicit dynamic testing. What is explicit dynamic testing? So, in explicit uh, dynamic testing, the most of the systems functions are tested by means of uh, test cases specifically designed for that purpose. That means it is a basically a test case driven. Uh, with the test case, with the help of test cases, uh, it is a specifically designed for that purpose to test it. That means explicitly we will test it. With the help of test cases. In implicit dynamic testing, what we do is during the test process and execution, the metrics are analyzed to conclude on the specific testing scenario. That means, uh, while testing uh, some methods or some strategy, we may come across some of the uh, execution details or some outputs we may get it partially or fully. All these are used uh, in terms of uh, testing uh, or test process. That will help in concluding the specific test scenarios. These are all implicit dynamic testing. That means testing testing aspects are done implicitly. We don't have a specific test scenario for this. While doing some of the explicit test scenario, we may come across testing.
outputs which is enough for arriving or controlling the outputs. So that are all part of the implicit dynamic testing. So usually most of the systems functions are tested by means of test cases specifically designed for the uh, that uh, purpose basically for testing. So to this end uh, many test design techniques are available uh, uh, we will discuss about that in later sessions. The testing can also be done by analyzing the matrix as I said uh, that is all implicit testing or by assessing the initiated measures on the basis of a checklist that means uh, as a conclusion of explicit we might also cover some of the other scenarios those are all part of the implicit testing. For example, uh, performance can be tested during the testing of functionality by measuring the response times or memory uh, with the help of some of the inbuilt tools. So we may not need a separate test scenario for doing these kind of tests. So no explicit test cases uh, will be designed for this. So it is tested implicitly. That is why it is called implicit testing. Uh, another example is security. For instance, can be tested uh, static, uh, statically by reviewing the security regulations, uh, security aspects of how it is implemented, how it is behaving. All this can be tested implicitly. So that is about uh, implicit dynamic testing. Okay. The next one is. Uh, <coughs> Structured basis testing. We know that uh, we have studied about the TM method applying the NATO principles of life cycle infrastructure techniques and organization. These principles are called structured output. So, dynamic testing is one of them. So, we apply the structured basis methods for doing the dynamic testing. So, similarly, any other testing approaches to align with the test process will define. Uh, in the beginning of the embedded software testing we all coming under dynamic testing okay now coming to static versus analytic uh, dynamic testing in software development static analysis and dynamic testing are two different uh, ways of uh, detecting uh, defects we know that unfortunately there are uh, uh, <coughs> too many thoughts of uh, completion uh, are complementing each other and developers are sometimes encouraged to favor one of the exclusion for other one like some people prefer static some people prefer dynamic that way. So what will happen is we need to segregate between static as well as dynamic when we draw the plan or when we do the strategy. Also we need to define the tools that are very much important. Uh, there are tools for static analysis also. So, segregation of uh, test strategy in alignment with uh, development uh, aspects. or the development team also because we need to be in concert with the team also because they are the one who will develop the system and we should provide sufficient inputs or they should be knowledgeable enough in the sense that how this system can be tested so that testing goes smooth. So in that aspect so we will clearly define how much of the testing I will cover with the dynamic testing how much I can do with the static and what are the tools static testing tools that I will use and dynamic testing tools so that the development team has a gist of what is getting done during the testing. So this will be clear in terms of any inaccuracy or harmful implementation uh, that may be there underneath the developer software. So, that will be a clear uh, vision for the development team and the development process, and uh, the role will be clearly defined uh, who is going to do what. So, 
the team will be aware of uh, what is going to be done. So two techniques uh, basically they complement each other for static and dynamic testing. A static analysis uh, were explicitly used in uh, earlier days uh, because we didn't have much tools uh, for doing this uh, dynamic testing. So most of the testing were done in terms of its intuition and uh, reviews. So that is what is all static analysis. Either tools were expensive or availability was not there or limited licenses. So all these were uh, some of the reasons why we didn't have much uh, uh, techniques for dynamic testing. So we used to have a more of a static testing. So now we do a lot of automation, a lot of tools are available for doing the testing uh, as much uh, with a minimum intervention of uh, humans. That is where the dynamic testing is growing, but still uh, it may not be enough to have a dynamic testing. Someone needs to do a static analysis. Okay, so now we will uh, having understood what is static and dynamic testing, we will go in detail of uh, dynamic testing. Okay, so dynamic testing is further divided into basic groups. We know that black box testing and white box testing. Look, can you pause please? Okay. So, time testing is basically divided into black and white box testing. We will study about each of them. As I said in my earlier sessions, Black box testing is something like uh, we don't need to know the uh, the finer details or the structure of the implementation or the programs which are part of the embedded software. Whereas in white box testing, the uh, internal details of the uh, embedded software uh, will be detailed for testing purpose. Also, we study about uh, black box testing techniques. And white box testing techniques. So these are all part of the dynamic testing. Okay. Uh, basically, for doing dynamic testing, black box or white box, uh, whatever techniques that we want to apply, we need to have these things minimum taken care of while uh, doing the black box or white box testing. First thing is the strategy that we need to have it for doing the test. Next one is the test case selection. That means once we work out the strategy, once uh, uh, strategy is uh, in place, we need to select the test cases. Uh, how are we going to pick the test cases? How are we going to add test cases more and more or less or whatever? Then finally, we are going to have a coverage. How much? Uh, the code is covered or how much the functionality or requirements is covered. So these three aspects have to be there part of the dynamic or uh, dynamic testing uh, which could be black box or white box. So we need to have a strategy, the strategy will define uh, the purpose, the goal and uh, how to reach that goal. So once we have the strategy, how to attain that strategy is what we have to define under the strategy. It could be a performance related, or it could be a functional related, or whatever it is. So basically, specification we have, we know the system, we have understood and analyzed the requirements. Now, it is a time for us to define the strategy. 
once we have the strategy broader level defined we are going to define test cases for each of the strategy per requirements under the test case selection methods we have how to pick up the test cases for each of the requirements or group of requirements or it could be functionality or features so we will select the test cases or we will define the number of test cases so i am going to pick then once uh, test cases we have defined for all these requirements we have to group it because we are going to write the scenarios the scenarios could be covering the different test cases one test case two case test case whatever it is it could be multiple test cases also so for uh, simplicity sake i will write it so it will be easier one or more test cases can be part of the scenario it is basically driven from the features or functionality perspective and purely this drives the grouping once we have the test cases So what we do is just we define the test cases, one set of complete test cases for each requirement or functionality or feature, whatever it is underneath the the defined embedded software. Then we are going to segregate whether whether they can represent good enough. For all possible test cases, all scenarios can be run, or can we eliminate some of the some of the uh, test cases? Can we do a implicit uh, testing with the help of explicit uh, testing methods? All this will be under test case selection. Because why this is important is uh, we cannot be writing uh, uh, test cases uh, just like that for a requirement. A requirement could be talking about uh, hundred test cases. It doesn't mean that all hundred test cases are going to be tedious, tediously defined and tested. So it could be some ten, five, twenty, whatever it is. That is again depending on the test selection method. So we need to be doing a good selection of test cases and the methods. Finally, once we have the test case selections, we are going to have coverage. so i repeat the strategy uh, what we do is uh, we deal with uh, uh, defining the problem of the test uh, to clarify the purpose of testing then uh, define a goal and finally we develop the strategy how to reach that goal once the goal has been defined a test case selection strategy can be constructed we are going to construct the uh strategy wise uh, test cases the obvious strategy would be to test everything that is there always but uh the possibilities like as i said uh, we cannot have a infinite number of uh, test cases as it grows uh it's based on the strategy uh, how we are going to select the input or if it is not feasible we are going not going to select those things it is subjective again based on the functionality of the feature or the limitations that the system has so we need to be carefully selecting the test cases that are going to be executed eventually these test cases should be good representatives of all the possible test scenarios to simplify the selection there are a large number of test case selection methods are there most of them are associated with the coverage criteria or how we are going to make it a feasible completion of the test so basically to determine if we can discover failures or we can stop the testing i mean basically stop means here there is a sampling criteria if out of 10 tests i can have a stop criteria saying that fifth test fifth test five failures are there i'm not no more going to continue because those five failures are very critical and those need to be fixed before i take up the next something like that so coverage is a measurement of how much has been done compared to the total number of work so that is what we do with the coverage 
okay now we come to test case selection methods in black box the selection method is basically functional or data driven that is the real input what we are going to use it is what is the criteria for test case selection so based on requirements functional specification interfaces or system specification as needed we are going to have the selection black box test design techniques are based on the functional behavior of systems without having any explicit knowledge of the implementation stance as i said in earlier session the user or the test designer will not have any knowledge about the internal details he all he knows the box that is the embedded system what it is supposed to do what is the specification how it can be fed with the real inputs what is the expectation what is the output that he can expect so in black box testing the component is subject to input and the resulting output is analyzed whether it conforms to the expected results or the behavior so in the white box testing the test selection is purely based on the structural or the logic that is implemented within the software so based on the implementation or the structure of the code we are going to try the test cases or we are going to define test cases or the selecting test cases white box test design techniques are based on the knowledge of the components internal structure and uses all the information about how the inside of a unit works that means what are the different components of the units that are there and how they interact how it can be driven uh, how it is going to result so all these uh, micro level details are part of this white box uh, test case selection so this information might be code or design so sometimes uh, the code may not be enough a well uh, defined or well designed uh, document also will be used for defining the white box uh, test cases white box tests ensure that each implemented test statement is run at least once and are tested against correct behavior that means the implementation of the code has to be run or executed at least once and with that execution we are going to test it against some behavior that should be correct behavior that is what we do with the white box so these are some of the aspects of test case selection for a black box and white box so we know that uh, what we do is uh, uh, for the test cases that we have selected we are going to have inputs uh, that will be determined then uh, the next step is to define the expected output for each of these input so all test cases always take the expected output from the requirements for that particular input to find out uh, how the object under uh, test should react to the particular input so we will have uh, i think i explained the earlier sessions we have an input we have conditions we have an expected output all this will be laid out so this is a standard we use it for uh, basically black box or white box it doesn't matter because our test case design is such so we have input we have conditions so that are required to trigger the input then we have the expected output so this is a basic thing that we are going to have it for test case design okay so basically we use the logic logic here in white box whereas in black box we use the specification or higher level requirements <coughs> so that is about uh, the test case selection here is a diagram which clearly identifies uh, the black box and white box testing how it is going to be used i mean uh, 
uh, we have uh, we know that the component level testing is there, integration testing is there, system testing, operation test down the line, and as an embedded system, we have to cover it. So it will be covered 90 percent or 90 to 99 percent with the help of black box and white box. There are cases where we use gray box. It is called. I'll just put few words, but we will not concentrate on the gray box. It is a mix of both black box as well as white box. This is an interesting thing actually. I will explain in detail. <laughs> we know what is black box. We know what is white box. Uh, the two types of test cases are used a little bit differently in the development of system. White box test cases are mostly used in the early test cases. We know that uh, of the development cycle and uh, are of less usage higher up in the testing hierarchy. And uh, black box testing techniques techniques are used throughout the development life cycle. That means we always focus on the black box level. The main advantage with the black box testing is that the only uh, depends on the requirements. Whereas the white box purely depending on the low level design and implementation. So both methods are of course important white box as well as black box however there is a boundary between these two. So a gray box tester partially knows the internal structure which includes the access to the documentation of data structures as well as the algorithms some sort of a uh, final details of the implementation uh, will be part of the gray box system and uh, he is also knowledgeable enough at the higher level that means uh, the detailed documents in terms of uh, specification uh, describing the end application what is going to be uh, running on the field. So all this will be part of the black box so the gray box tester will also have to So gray box testing sometimes are applied explicitly, but it could be defined underneath the white box itself or black box itself. But just for a definition sake, it is beneficial because it takes the straightforward technique of black box testing and combines it with the code targeted systems in white box testing. So while doing the black box, we have a fair idea about what is happening with the that is the implementation of the code, uh, but generally I have seen uh, not much used in the embedded systems uh, industry, uh, they do not have a separate definition though they cover it uh, while doing the black box uh, or the white box, uh, usually it is uh, used in uh, I would say object uh, oriented software systems mostly it is used so it has both a mix of black box as well as white box strategy so let us not uh, uh, concentrate much on this uh, strategy it is uh, at this definition is a combination of both just for the definition sake okay so we understood what is black box what is uh, white box while doing the dynamic testing. Now coming to the coverage, it's very important thing because uh, at the end of the day, after completion of the embedded software testing, uh, we need to be knowing how much we have tested. So without that, uh, testing is not complete. So, what is white box uh, testing coverage? What is black box uh, testing coverage? Core coverage is what is that called as white box testing coverage. Basically, it measures the code coverage in terms of how much execution I have done during the white box testing versus the total cover. Basically, it is a executed code divided by total code will give the code coverage in terms of percentage. The coverage is different in terms of percentage. Similarly here also 
the coverage for black box testing is measured purely this is based on the requirements so how much of the requirements have been tested versus or divided by total number of requirements we give a percentage of cover how much i have covered suppose for example we take both of them will define uh, <coughs> there is a thousand lines of code that is a denominator and we have covered say some 70 500 lines of code that means while doing the black box system we have covered the 7500 lines of code uh, I am sorry 70 750 lines or you can say 10,000 lines suppose it is 10,000 lines it will be 7500 then it will become something like 75 percent right. So that is the code coverage I have so 25 percent I would have covered or I would not have covered so what are the techniques that we can cover that all we will study while doing the white box testing uh, uh, techniques uh, details. So uh, we use uh, for white box testing uh, tools such as Ectocast, uh, RTRT, uh, etc. But uh, it may not be possible to cover 100 percent uh, with the help of that. So we have to see the other techniques in terms of coverage. So those coverage aspects are all very detailed later. Okay. Similarly, coming to <coughs> requirement coverage, I have say. 100 requirements and I have covered 80 requirements. So my percentage of cover is 80 percent. So 80 percent I have covered. The 20 percent of coverage we need to see how uh, that is called as a coverage shortfalls. How I am going to cover these shortfalls that is 20 percent. 25 percent for white box and 20 percent for black box. Okay. So there are different techniques that are used for coverage shortfalls. Like uh, we could take uh, a credit of uh, white box for the black box. Similarly, credit of uh, black box for white box. It means to say that some of the requirements which I cannot cover. In black box, I would have covered with the execution of that particular functionality. So I would say I have covered in terms of error free code so that it doesn't harm. But it suggested not to have this thing. So the best way to have techniques defined for shortfalls, so which could be inspection. Analysis, reviews, etc. Of course, uh, while doing all this, uh, we might uh, look into some of the results that we have achieved doing the white box while we are doing the analysis of the black box. The other way also is true while doing the white box, you might have to take a credit of black box uh, in terms of inspection, analysis, etc. So that will be used in terms of the complete coverage. So the ultimate aim is to cover 100 percent. Without 100 percent, the testing is not complete. So we should be telling that I have covered 100 percent of the requirements, or I have covered 100 percent of the code that is tested. So then only the product is called as the embedded software testing completed.
okay so next one you will see a difference uh, tabulated here black box versus white box system so also called black box is also called as input output driven testing or specification based testing whereas white box is called logic driven testing or implementation based testing. we know that white box is taken or done with the help of the implementation of the code and software is viewed as a black box without bothering about the internal behavior and structure of the program in the black box system whereas in white box testing we need to analyze the internal behavior of the structure of the program or the code software is tested against its specification software is tested against low level specification or it could be design also called as a detailed design or low level design also we use the code as a knowledge for white box testing test data is derived solely from the specification so we have the Test selection or the test data are defined based on the requirements of the specification, whereas the test data is derived from the logic of the program. That is, we will understand the logic of the code that is implemented. Based on that, we will arrive at the test data. So these are the differences between black box and white box. We will see advantages and disadvantages of each methods that we have for black box and white box okay so what are the advantages of black box <coughs> so black box uh, tester uh, no need to have a connections with the code he doesn't have to care about what is a code but all he has to care or his perspective should be code should have bug that means he should suspect always seeing that the code will be having some issue that's why it's failing that should be the intention of the motto for a tester to see to that he is testing the embedded software embedded software or the embedded system with that energy test cases are designed as soon as the specification so he don't have to wait for the implementation to complete he can test it as soon as the requirement is done on the to wait for the code or implementation to complete because we know black box so we don't need to bother about the internals all we bother about the requirements against what the product is being developed there is a need of having detailed functional knowledge or the system of the system to the tester and its behavior definitely this is one of the important thing that i have spoken last time uh, the tester should have a sound knowledge equally to the development team that means test will be done from the end user perspective so definitely he needs to have a end user end user point of view and he should have a sound knowledge of the system of the test uh, this is why because the end user should accept the system basically without the knowledge we cannot test it so to understand the system the best way to do is do a black box test so these are reason sometimes this testing technique is also called as acceptance system because the product can be accepted or not can be told only in the testing mechanism of the black box test so black box testing also helps to identify the ambiguity and any contradictions in functional specifications that means it will bring out if any uh, internal connected requirement or any ambiguity is there all those aspects will be identified it means uh, the if the requirements are complete or no ambiguity is there or it is uh, correct all this these things will be tested in the sense that when we have a larger system the basic specification is subdivided into 
subsystem requirements. What will happen is uh, since these subsystems are there or uh, specified with different people, uh, there are chances that uh, there is a disconnect between these subsystems uh, and its developers. So all this will be identified with the help of black box. Sometimes uh, while writing the test case itself, uh, we will come to know the problems with the requirements that the requirement is contradicting to the other requirement. So this having the ambiguity in terms of its complete completeness, or how is it? Uh, the requirement is not completely written such that it can be tested. So, uh, other aspect of uh, the requirement is that requirement should be written such that it can be tested. It's very important thing that uh, the developer uh, has to take care. So these are some of the advantages of the black box testing. So why we need to have all this is because it is useful for the or the efficient for the larger or complex systems. Okay. So that is about the advantages of the black box testing. Black box testing disadvantages. There are more advantages. Equally, it is having a disadvantage. But uh, we'll see uh, how to overcome all these things. Testing with every possible uh, inputs is unrealistic because it would take an inordinate amount of time and tedious. It is that means sometimes uh, those specifications says the system should accept uh, so and so signals and it should tolerate so and so temperatures. Or the ambience, whatever it is. So what will happen is it may not be possible to feed all those values. It may be difficult, or the or those situations may not arise. Uh, but it can so happen that uh, we may not be able to uh, feed the values. Uh, unrealistic situation uh, is may be difficult to emulate. And black box testing mostly doesn't care about the spectral and distant coverage. So, if something is there, uh, what is going to happen? If something is not there, it is also called an else portion of it. What is not going to happen? So that portion of it it may not cover sometimes. Why? Because we are going to go purely by the requirements, especially. If then kind of requirements we may not be able to test it completely. Exact that is specifically for the code actually, but sometimes the requirement also have to specify if this condition occurs, this has to happen. If this condition doesn't happen, that is the L for else portion of it. So what is going to happen? So that is all sometimes will be part of the code, but it is good to have requirements identifying all these things. In that case, uh, it is easy to do the black box testing, uh, but black box testing doesn't care about uh, the additions or the structural coverage. Exact point in the code where the software malfunction is that cannot be detected. That means uh, we may not be able to. Sometimes it may hang, or sometimes it may not behave the way it should. Uh, we don't know what is the issue while doing the black box testing. So though we say as a failure, we may not be able to arrive at a uh, analysis of where it is failed. So it is because it is due to the implementation issue. So in that case we may have to do a inspection, code inspection, where the faulty code is there or faulty code is this. The reasons for intermittent failures of the code Cannot be determined. That means uh, this is a very typical uh, thing actually in the embedded system. So what will happen? Uh, we may not be able to reproduce some of the failures. It is uh, very difficult. Sometimes 
the failure occurs sometimes it does not how do you find out so those cases also it is uh, difficult to do a black box uh, testing <coughs> is a disadvantage we you know the failures are there but uh, to make it point uh, where it is going to fail it may be difficult because it varies as told here whether user required functionality is implemented exactly or not we don't know until we discover with the help of other methods okay the next disadvantage is that some of the errors may not be able to discover until the white box testing is done so as i said so all these disadvantages may require uh, to do a white box testing with the help of white box testing we might analyze and come to a conclusion why it is failing at the higher level and the last sort of disadvantage is that uh, heavy dependency on the test environment and stable system so is very important we need to have a very predictable and dependent uh, uh, stable system so such environment we need to have it so that's a challenge so that is why we have a heavy dependency of this for the black box testing okay so now next uh, thing is we move to white box uh, testing the advantages as the knowledge of the internal coding structure is a prerequisite it becomes very easy to find out which type of data input we can provide so what are those uh, application that can be uh, tested with the help of that so all this will be easier and efficiently we can test it and uh, white box testing uh, techniques helps in removing the unwanted lines of code that means we know what lines of code is responsible for what functionality what is not responsible uh, what are the defects that we have what is the program all can be discovered with the help of white box testing sometimes uh, for example <coughs> faulty code segments it will find out the use of equal to double equal to there is a difference between that so all this will be uh, found out uh, if you use uh, equal to and uh, if you use uh, double equal to for a couple of variables the variable will uh, roll out that means there is called a roll out problem uh, there is a difference one is for uh, comparison other one is for assignment so definitely there is a chance that uh, the intended purpose of that uh, piece of code will fail the next one is the discrepancies between the core and requirements can be identified that means uh, it is equally important uh, for the white box tester to have some knowledge of the requirements or uh, a minimum knowledge that is enough for him to do the white box system so that he can find the discrepancies uh, what is uh, to be implemented this is very much important uh, especially for the algorithms or uh, uh conversions uh some of the adc what is getting used and uh, representations tolerances because because tolerances are defined directly in the requirements like it could be plus or minus some percentage in percentage for example these are defined directly in the requirements so it is good to have a knowledge of requirements and we know what code should be there for that requirements particularly so all this can be found out with the help of white box testing any error are there and for doing the white box testing we don't have a system requirement we don't need a end to end system or the actual end target because uh, uh, the actual end target may require some signals those signals we can emulate with the help of our processing with the values that we want to drive so those are the advantages of the white box testing disadvantages of uh, white box testing <coughs> are as per below as knowledge of core and internal structure is uh, prerequisite a skilled tester is needed to carry out the testing because he needs to have a thorough understanding of the 
complete code what is going to test it so basically this will result in extra amount and the cost and the white box testing is usually time consuming because he has to test from all the aspects and he needs to understand how the code is going to be compiled and the code development environment he needs to have details that he needs to know <laughs> because uh, he will be covering the structure of the code and its implementation as per the standards that are there. At time there is a need of system knowledge for the details of implementation especially the call sensors and different states of the software. So all this knowledge he needs to process so that is why white box testing is a bit uh, I would say is time consuming and a uh, lot of uh, uh, methodical efforts are required. So that is a disadvantage, but there is a dedicated team usually allocated throughout the testing life cycle of the white box system for an embedded system. Okay. Next. Uh, we understood the white box disadvantages, advantages, black box advantages, and disadvantages. Having understood the black box and white box testing terminology, we are under the dynamic testing. Now we will come to the test selection criteria for the dynamic testing of the black box. What are those? So, equivalence partitioning is one of the test selection criteria. Boundary value analysis, state or event transition. These three categories are used for test selection criteria. We know that uh, test selection criteria is uh, based on uh, different uh, methods. It is for black box, we have functional data driven. These are some of the inputs. So don't get confused with uh, the methods and the criteria that we have for uh, test selections. Equivalence partitioning, boundary value analysis, state of event transition. So we know the requirements. What are those? Inputs, how it's going to be tested? All this should be covered under one of the criteria, or we should have the criteria used for selection. These selections are primarily based on normal or robustness conditions. We will detail out all these things in the next slides. And uh, it will be in the next class. As uh, we complete this class, we will go through some of the words embedded software testing, word development words uh, that we have added SSIT, SSIT, and uh, IVNV, independent validation verification, which is today, robustness. Any other words that we want to add, we can do it. I think white box, black box is not there. White black, white box, black box, and selection. So these are some of the embeds of the or the system words that are required to have an understanding from the desktop perspective. Okay, so that is uh, the conclusion of this uh, class. Before that, uh, I have a few exercise questions of this class. What is the difference between static questions? What sort of systems are the white box and uh, Black box systems are advantages. This may have been brief. What are the selection criteria that need to be considered for black box system? How coverage is defined for requirements based system? Okay. Uh, so we will go through the next class with the uh, equivalence partitioning, both value analysis, etc. To recap on today's class, we studied about 
the methods of uh, dynamic testing black box and white box its advantages disadvantages and the grouping of that and what is the selection <coughs> and what is the coverage for white box as well as black box thank you